Millions of people in the world today probably have the question in the title of this video on their minds. I beg your pardon, do you think I'm crazy? That was the question he asked the author of the only official biography ever written about him when they first met. Not the author's question, but Elon Musk's question to the author. Am I crazy? Let's imagine a situation like this. You start a company. You work day and night and grow this company. You get new partners. You find investors. You develop a payment system that is valid in 200 countries around the world. Finally, you sell this company for $1.5 billion. And you get around $165 million in cash in your pocket after this sale. Now you can live comfortably for the rest of your life without working. But what does Elon Musk do? He immediately finds a few plots of land that have not yet been zoned and surrounds them. If you are thinking, you are not crazy. On the contrary, you are very smart. Because a crazy person would go and build a rocket factory instead. Yes, Elon Musk is investing all the money that came into his pocket after this sale. Even a few million dollars he saved in his piggy bank in the kitchen, in three different companies in three different industries. Ten million dollars in Solar City and the energy company, seventy million dollars in Tesla and the automotive industry, and one hundred million dollars in SpaceX in the space industry. All three are risky sectors, but they all serve a common vision, and we will eventually understand what that means. Most developers who grow up in Silicon Valley reinvest the money they make back into technology. Take Steve Jobs, who they often compare him to. Even he was only successful in the entertainment industry outside of technology. For example, in 2008, he was able to shake up the entertainment industry by launching the 3G, the new model of the Apple iPhone, and releasing Wall-E with the Pixar animation studio he founded. He challenged the giants of the music industry while developing the iPod and iTunes. Elon Musk's sights are set on space. He is not taking risks, he is taking ultra-risks. You have to compete not with companies, but with governments. Because in this field, world giants like the US, Russia, and China are growing. Now let's continue with our dream. What would you do to start a space company? Where would you take the first step? How do you start? You will invest only $100 million, and you will risk competing with NASA, whose annual budget is $19 billion. I'll tell you what Elon Musk did. He immediately read all the books he could find on this subject, on space and rockets. He became so well-versed in the subject that when he told the engineers he hired later on when he founded his company, when he said, do this, do that, he was able to show that he knew at least as much about the subject as they did. In the meantime, he interviewed the first 1,000 people he hired directly. These interviews he had with them were also very interesting. For example, he directly telephoned Jim Cantrell, a former NASA employee. Cantrell tells the rest as follows. One day I was driving down the road in my car when the phone rang. When I answered it, someone with a funny accent said, I'm a billionaire and I'm going to start a space program and I need to talk to you. I couldn't hear him very well at the time and I didn't really trust what he was saying. He continues, when he said his name I thought it was Yun Musk. Everyone is confused about how to pronounce his name. Anyway, to summarize, he first built a theoretical foundation for himself by reading all the books he could find on space and rocket science. Then, he gathered the world's brightest minds around him and started to put it into practice. This is how SpaceX was founded, but I am more interested in why it was founded rather than how it was founded. In English, there is a phrase used for the most difficult jobs. It's just a puzzle, it's not rocket science. In other words, rocket science is shown as the most difficult job in the world. Elon Musk started such a challenging journey just as he was about to relax. He couldn't take any more of the world's brightest minds working on how to show more ads on Facebook, so he allowed them to actually do rocket engineering. And behind all of this madness is a very big vision. The dream of one day going to Mars and settling there. Elon Musk's main office is inside the SpaceX factory in the middle of a big city in Los Angeles. And in the corridor leading to his office, there are two posters hanging in the hallway. The one on the left shows Mars as it is today, that cold, barren, red planet. Opposite it, on the right, there's an imaginary one, 
Mars is in green surrounded by oceans. This is what Musk's goal is to make Mars like this. Believe it or not, that's another matter, but this is his statement, and Tesla, he has a company that produces electric cars. Do you know that all the patents related to Tesla are open to the public? I mean, the car is like open source software, like WordPress, where anyone can get it for free and make a website. Anyone, including Tesla's competitors, can take these patents and try to do better than Tesla. Although he is now an American citizen, Elon Musk is an African. He was born in this most undeveloped continent of the world and grew up in the violence and tension in South Africa until the age of 17. And one of the most striking aspects of his character that started to form at that time was his urge to read books. Reading close to 10 hours a day was quite ordinary for him. On weekends, he could finish two books a day. When he was still a university student in the US, he identified three areas to work on the three problems that would affect the future of humanity the most. Internet, clean energy, and space. The steps he took afterwards, the companies he founded, and the decisions he made were all in this direction. Musk's long-term ideal is to help humanity by creating a civilization that can travel between planets in space through SpaceX. Does that sound too ambitious? Can he do these things? Can he not? We will see. The important thing is not whether he can do these things or not, friends. It's that a person has a vision. First setting a high goal, then fueling the rockets to reach that goal. That is vision. Elon has done this. If we want to succeed, we have no choice but to read and work. Thanks for listening to me, man. You can support me by subscribing and liking and stay tuned for the next videos. We love you. Take care until the next video.